Hello everyone, we are talking about the development of tongue and thyroid and in this section we will talk about the development of tongue. There are three further components to this section. In the first component we will have the overview in which we will talk about how the tongue develops in the uh, human fetuses. After that we will talk about various swellings developing in the oral region that help to contribute that helps uh, that helps and contributes to the adult tongue and finally we'll see <coughs> what hypobranchial eminence is and how the hypobranchial eminence divides and contributes to the adult tongue so let's get into the details and see how that happens so first of all let's talk about the muscular component of the tongue the muscular component of the tongue is actually formed by the occipital myotomes so the myotomes that actually lie in the occipital region they migrate and help in the formation of the muscular components of the tongue so the development of tongue uh, the tongue has actually been divided developmentally into an oral part the oral part it actually develops from a lingual swelling and there are two lingual sw swellings and the tuberculum impa. So both all the, these three swellings help in the formation of the oral part of the tongue. These swellings actually lie in the region of first pharyngeal arch. The, uh, the, uh, the swelling would actually be seen in the upcoming uh, slides. Uh, we'll see how, how these uh, swellings develop from the first pharyngeal arch and help in the formation of the oral part of the hypobrachial uh, oral part of the tongue. Uh, moving on, we have the pharyngeal part of the tongue. The pharyngeal part of the tongue develops from uh, the hypobrachial eminence or the copula of his. So developmentally, the tongue has been divided into two parts, the oral part as well as the uh, pharyngeal part. So this is the oral part of the tongue. The oral part of the tongue is actually formed from the first pharyngeal arch. This longitudinal structure is the first pharyngeal arch. This pharyngeal arch gives rise to two lateral swellings. The two lateral swellings being called the lingual swellings and a central triangular swelling which is known as the tuberculum impar and the pharyngeal part of the tongue which lies in this region this is the pharyngeal part of the tongue it originates from the uh, hyperbranchial <coughs> eminence the hyperbranchial eminence is also known as the copula of his this is responsible for the production of the pharyngeal part of the tongue so moving on so uh, referring to the figure here, these are the swellings which I was referring to in the previous slide. These are the two lateral lingual swelling that develop in the mesenchyme of the first arch. This small swelling, the triangular area is the tuberculum impa. This in green is the hypobranchial eminence that helps in the formation of the uh, pharyngeal part of the tongue. The anterior part of the tongue is formed by the, the oral part rather is formed by the uh, lingual swellings as well as the tuberculum <coughs> impa. So the tongue develops in the floor of the developing mouth from the first, second, third, and fourth pharyngeal arches. So all the four <coughs> all the uh, primary four, the first four pharyngeal arches are involved in the development of tongue. Initially, a small median triangular swelling, which is known as the Tuberculum impa develops in the floor of the primitive pharynx. So this in pink is the tuberculum impa, which uh, the uh, appearance of the tuberculum impa begins the development of the tongue. Now the two lateral lingual swellings, these in orange, uh, they also appear on each side of the tuberculum impa. The two lateral swellings are placed slightly distally. They are present distally and to the sides of tuberculum impa. <laughs> They are hence known as the distal tongue buds. Now, um, let's see, uh, this was all happening in the first pharyngeal arch, but we said that uh, the uh, tongue is formed by the first four pharyngeal arches. So let's see what is the uh, contribution of the second, third and fourth pharyngeal arch. So caudal to the tuberculum impa. So this is the tuberculum impa. We're talking about this region, which lies caudal to the tuberculum impa. A second large median swelling <coughs> appears. This is the uh, this is the large median swelling we are talking about. This is known as the hypobranchial eminence or the copula of his. 
so hypobranchial eminence or copula of his is the second median swelling the first median swelling being the tuberculum impar which appears in the first pharyngeal arch however in the second third and fourth pharyngeal arch a large median swelling appears this median swelling is known as the hypobranchial eminence or corpus of copula or copula of his which is being represented in the figure here so this copul of his it develops in the floor of the primitive pharynx and it is related to the third uh, second third and fourth pharyngeal arches so this is the contribution of second third and fourth pharyngeal arches now the hypobranchial eminence it soon divides into a large cranial part here you can see this is the large cranial part and this is the small caudal part so this is the <coughs> small caudal part of the hypobranchial eminence so summarizing all of it we have the um, the oral the oral part of the tongue and the pharyngeal part of the tongue first of all the oral part of the tongue or the anterior tongue it is formed by the tuberculum impar and the lingual swellings which are also known as distal lung buds they help in the formation of the oral part of the tongue these all these uh, these three uh, swellings they originate in the first pharyngeal arch now the contribution of second third and fourth pharyngeal arch is the to uh, is the formation of hypobranchial eminence the hypobranchial eminence is responsible for um is uh, helped in the formation of post uh, the pharyngeal part of the adult tongue the uh, it divides into a cranial component and a caudal component the uh, derivatives of which help in the formation of adult tongue and will be taken up in the subsequent sections so i hope you understood this section in this section we saw how various components of tongue developed what were their embryological origins and what swellings contributed to what components of tongue in the human adult for further sections keep watching scardia.com